So this is good, the system is all working properly, but now what we want to do is we'd like to create a centralized way of migrating all of the clients to the new version without having to go and create config files for all of these guys. To do this, we go to the .NET utility. This time we go to configured applications, or configured assemblies I should say, and we choose to configure an assembly. These are settings that are going to be stored at the global level or the machine level. We're going to choose an assembly from the assembly cache, and we're going to find our library. And we're going to find the first version, version 0, the original version. We're going to select it, press finish, go to the binding policy, and once again do exactly the same as before. We're going from version 0 to version 1, and we press OK. We notice there's no config file here, however, it should run the new modified version. In other words, everybody on this machine has now been redirected to a newer version automatically without any, any real effort. Having said that, where is this config file and where is it stored and, and so forth? I've created a shortcut to it here. The folder structure, as you can see, is quite in-depth. It's the Windows folder, Microsoft.NET, Framework, Version Number, Config and you have a file called machine.config. Machine.config stores lots of different values, but towards the end of this file, we will have a section which is, there it is, I was lost it for a second there, it's called runtime. So we've got the runtime section, and inside here we have pretty much exactly the same concept as what we saw earlier on. We've got this global redirection taking place between version 0 and version 1. So because of that machine.config we're doing that redirection. So now everybody is using the new version quite happily. However, the third and final way of doing this is to actually create a way that we can tell people to redirect but just using the actual deployment of the DLL itself. And to do this, I'm just going to reset something here. I'm just going to unconfigure or delete the uh, global configuration value. So effectively back to sort of like how it was before, so everyone will run against their own local versions at the moment. What we want to do now is create what's called a publisher policy file. A publisher policy file is just a config file, and I've just called it policy.config. And essentially, it contains pretty much exactly the same things that we've seen previously. All I need to do now is fill in my public key token, because that will have changed, because I auto-generated my, my key and, and so forth. So now what I need is my public key token. The easiest way of getting this is to take my existing config file and just copy the same key token from here. We save that. Now what we need to do is something slightly interesting. We need to go and generate a assembly that just contains our config file. To do this, we use the assembly linker command. The assembly linker command has a link switch that allows us to give it the actual config file and we have to generate a file name out from this, an assembly. Now this name is quite important. It must start with the word policy dot original major version number, which in this case is 1.0. So these are the first two digits from your four, di four part, so the first two parts from your four part version number. And then we have to have the same name as the actual DLL itself. So because our DLL is called library.dll, it must be called policy.1.0.library.dll. Key file, we must give this assembly the same strong name key as the actual library's strong name key. So we're going to take that value and we're now going to attempt to run that in the .NET command prompt. And there we go. So we should now have a new DLL called policy.1.0.dll. And there is no code in this. This is just effectively it's going to what it's going to do is redirect people to use that new version. Because remember at the moment this guy is using his original version he was built against. So now what we want to do is we've got to take this DLL and we've got to put him in the GAC as well. So 
So the assembly has been added to the cache. It will show up inside the assembly cache under the word policy. Okay, so policy.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0